Hello, student. Uh, good evening to all of you. So I think I'm audible and visible at your end. So as you know, ki yesterday uh, you had the exam of your foreign medical graduate exam over there, and we are discussing the probable answers of uh, questions which has been recalled by student. Now, as you know, ki the main purpose of this session is to discuss the possible answers of the questions which has been recalled by the student but again you know ki because it's a recall based session so most of the questions may not be the exact questions of the paper so uh, the basic purpose of this session that uh, so that you can give feedback that which question is not exact or if there are certain changes in the option was there so please give that feedback during the session you can write down in the chat box so uh, hello dr diha I hope I'm audible and visible at your end. So we are going to start the physiology questions. Um, I'm not going to take much of the time in discussing the uh, detail analysis that what questions, what, why this, this is the correct answer, why the other answer are not the correct one. Because you know, yesterday question, uh, answer, uh, I mean, exam was there and today you are not in a mood to listen the explanation of the questions. So we are going to discuss the just question and their answer. So we are starting the physiology session. The first question that coming here is, look at the question. So young patient experience shortness of breath, especially during exercise, right? In winter season and subside with salbutamol, what is the most likely explanation for these conditions? So you can understand from this question that the person is suffering from bronchospasm. Now the cold air is also a stimulus for the bronchospasm because it causes release of the acetylcholine. Not only that, exercise itself can also cause bronchospasm because you know whenever some person is doing exercise, there will be rapid breathing because of which some cold air will enter into the inner, I mean deeper part of the lung because the upper part of the conducting system will not be able to warm them up. So if I have to choose, so this is also can happen in cold this can also happen in cold decrease cardiac output stimulating this is we are not going to consider and we are also not going to consider the cold injured asthma exacerbation because there are specific key condition is given that is during exercise it is happening and during winter season it's happening so the best answer from this possible options will be the option number c so this is typically is the exercise induced asthma exacerbations because you know exercise itself apart from cold it's a stimulus for the uh, bronchospasm because whenever a person is doing exercise because of the rapid breathing cold air will enter easily into the inner part of the lung so the best answer is exercise induced bronchoconstriction triggered by the cold air okay okay next question is coming here so this is again a uh, typical question which is generally asked in almost every physiology exam whether it is fmg or ini set or uh, neat pg so the what best describe the steps three in the given images so as you can look at here so this three is the repolarization part of the images so we all know that during the action potential the repolarization of the neuronal action potential or the myocardial action potential or whatever you say that is due to the efflux of potassium ion so option c is the best possible answer here option c efflux of potassium very good uh, doctor okay so i believe you have also done this correctly okay now the third question so we are going here so the third question which of the following changes is seen on jvp in atrial fibrillation so this is a very easy question you know in your medicine you have read it in your um, pharmacology you may also read it and in physiology generally i have discussed this part but uh, you know ki even if i don't discuss in the uh, any of my session you know the answer that atrial fibrillation means there will be absent a wave i believe you have done it correctly because it's an easy question and i hope the recall of the question is also okay everybody my request is that if you feel that some of the options are not proper or you want to change the stem of the questions please do that in the chat box so we then so that we can update the question accordingly okay but otherwise the answer of this question is the absent away so three question done next question is which vitamin deficiency can causes lactic acidosis 
This question is typically a kind of biochemical question, biochemistry question. So I believe Madam has also discussed this question. The answer of this question will be thiamine deficiency because you know the thiamine deficiency means the pyruvate that will be produced that will not be able to utilize by the mitochondria in a proper way in thiamine deficiency. So answer of this question is option number D. So doc, you have done very correctly. Uh, Dr. Thampa and Dr. Naughty Doctor, Dr. Bhumi has also done the, given the correct answer. So the, I believe this is an easy question in your biochemistry, right? So uh, easy. Next question. A long history is given. 28 year old woman present with fatigue, weakness. Okay. Particularly the eyelids and the extracular muscle. From here, you can guess that what may be the disease. Then the ptosis is also given. Diplopia is also given and particularly happening in the evening. So all of you can now guess the disease that it's a myasthenia gravis. And this cold pack improve the so uh, whenever you give the ice pack on the eyelids it's improved the ptosis so this is cold in, induced preservation of the acetylcholine it prevent the breakdown of the acetylcholine whenever you give the cold compression on the eyelid so all of these are indicating that the person is suffering from the myasthenia gravis now myasthenia gravis means obviously the answer will be very easy now it's not an presynaptic terminal disorder and it's not an voltage gated calcium channel disorder voltage gated calcium channel disorder is the lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome where symptoms are not predominantly on the uh, i mean eyelids and uh, doses so you can also easily exclude so all these options so only option that is correct here is option number b that auto antibody blocking the acetylcholine receptor at the postsynaptic terminal okay not a because here it is given it is a presynaptic terminal so best is the postsynaptic terminal auto antibody destroying the acetylcholine receptor in the postsynaptic terminal that is the best choice here okay all good okay okay next question we are coming which of the following hormone in lactating mother is responsible for growth of the breast tissue okay now here the key word for the question is lactating mother. Okay. Now, you know, during pregnancy and during lactation, the development of the breast hormone has a little different role. Yes. So we know that estrogen is also required for the development of the breast. Progesterone is also required for the development of the breast and prolactin is also required to help estrogen and progesterone both the hormone. Okay. In class also, I taught you that estrogen for the ductular development and progesterone for the alveolar development and prolactin helps in both of them. So because of all these three hormones during pregnancy, the breast development happen. But during pregnancy and during lactation, the basic difference is that after the birth of the baby, after the release of the placenta, the estrogen and progesterone level will decrease to a very, very low level. So this estrogen and progesterone has less role in lactating man and lactating woman for the development of the breast tissue or for the maintenance of the lactation so the best answer here is the prolactin is the answer and all of you are absolutely correct so yes estrogen is the ductular proliferation and alveolar but that's not the answer answer it is the option number c that is the prolactin okay very good so this question was there i believe that is why you are not saying anything so this was the question okay next question a 35 year old man Wakes up after sleeping with his arm dropped over a chair and complain of pain. So basically because the arms was dropped over the chair, so there was compression on the nerve. And because of the compression, the person is getting some kind of pain. Okay. So this is basically a kind of paresthesia. So paresthesia, this question was asked in the neat Fiji a couple of years ago where the question was asked that this kind of symptoms is because of the involvement of the which nerve. So this pain is happening. This was because of the involvement of the A delta fiber. But here in this question, they are asking the order of susceptibility of the nerve fiber to this condition. So order of susceptibility means this is order of susceptibility in response to pressure, right? So in pressure, you know that the most sensitive fiber is the A fiber and the least sensitive fiber is the C fiber. So answer will be A greater than B greater than C. So answer here is option number D. Option, uh, sorry, option number B, that is the A greater than B greater than C. Okay. Uh, so Bhumi is saying C greater than B greater than A. Uh, no, that's not the correct one. The correct one is yes. Yes, the B one. Okay. A fiber in pressure, A fiber is the most susceptible followed by B and least susceptible is the fiber number C. Okay. 
any question or query so far i believe no so the next question which among the following best describe neurofraxia so this is generally will be discussed in orthopedics questions also because uh, nerve injury topic although it's part of the physiology but mostly in uh, neat pg and in um, fmg courses we generally discuss this topic along with the orthopedics okay so neuropraxia means the axon should be intact only the myelin sheath will be damaged and axonot mesis means the axons will be damaged as well as the sheath will be damaged so here neuropraxia means intact axons and damage nerve seeds. So A is the best answer of this question. Damage axons over so it will be axonot message, not the neuropraxia, right? None of the above damage. Okay. So A is the best possible answer, not the none of the above. Okay. Physiological conduction block is no hota because of the intact axon and damage to the nerve seed. Okay. So this is neuropraxia. Anybody want to change options or answer, you are welcome to write down your comment in the chat box. I will update. Okay. Now, the next question, a woman from Delhi travels to Ladakh, okay, and a high altitude region, obviously, you know, soon after the arrival, she develops symptoms such as breathlessness, headache, and uh, light headacheness and headache, dobar aage. anyway. Yes, obviously, due to nerve compression. But nerve seed get damaged, but not the axons. So now this is basically the acute mountain sickness. The person is suffering from the acute mountain sickness. The lady is suffering from acute mountain sickness. But that is not the question here. Okay. Acute mountain sickness is basically development of the edema in the brain. But in this question, they wants to ask you that in high altitude, whenever the person is uh, going to high altitude, there will be hyperventilation. And because of the hyperventilation, there will be wash out of carbon dioxide. There will be increased wash out of carbon dioxide from the body. And all of you know that whenever there is uh, So whenever there is hyperventilation, the carbon dioxide wash out will be there. So carbon dioxide wash out means it will be respiratory alkalosis. Neuropraxia. Nerve seed means axon is intact. Nerve seed means I'm talking about the nerve seed means that is the myelin seed they are talking about, not the nerve seed. Okay. Uh, physiological transmission disruption will be there, but among the best possible options, A will be the option. A will be the correct answer. Option are different here. Uh, option have hyperventilation. Okay, okay. Now here you are saying that this was not the option. Okay. So what was the option? Hyperventilation was option. Okay. That should be because, you know, ki if they're asking about the primary underlying mechanism for this, then they're asking about the mechanism of the acute mountain sickness. And I told you acute mountain sickness means there will be something like edema of the brain, edema of the white matter. It is something like, okay, 3000 feet above rust, downward, something like that. Okay, okay. Another was hypoxia. Okay, so I'll write down the possible option that you're talking about, the hypoxia, maybe an, okay, option. And, mm, Hyperventilation, there was hyperventilation was also in the option. Hyperventilation. Okay. Okay. Got it. So you are saying this was not the correct option. Okay. So please try to recall. And if you recall the options correctly, uh, you can message me in my Insta account also. I will later on after this question because I believe now it is not the time we will be able to recall all the options. So I'm skipping it. In the meantime, if you could recall any of the options, I'll come back to this. Okay. Okay. Now the next question. So this is, I think this is the ninth question in physiology. In malignant hyperthermia, a genetic mutation of the rhinodin 1 receptor of the skeletal muscle, all of you know, and uh, it happens in response to certain anesthetic agent. What is the primary ionic abnormality cause this receptor defect? First, tell me whether the stem of the question was okay, okay type means related to this question was there. Then if this was exactly the question or somewhat related to this, 
Then the options, you all know that options is rhinodine receptor mutation means uh, it is a calcium release channel from sarcoplasmic reticulum. The problem in this condition is that the negative feedback mechanism, which is supposed to close the rhinodine receptor through which calcium release is happening, that closure of the rhinodine receptor is not going to happen, means calcium release will continue. Okay, so the best possible answer that I have to choose from here increase sodium. So this is not going to be the answer. Increase potassium uptake. This is also not related to chloride influx. This is also not. So only one option is possible. Increase calcium release from sarcoplasm reticulum through rhinodine one receptor. Right. So this is the answer of the question that why the person is suffering from malignant hyperthermia because of the mutation of the RYR1 gene the person is suffering from okay so all of you done this correctly so only one question there was a little bit confusion here that option was not there so please try to recall the options okay if you could recall the options give me the correct options in my instagram profile or there is another one you are saying that this maybe the options was a little different so you can also recall this question that what is the exact question and what is the exact option so these two questions there was a little confusion otherwise this was all the questions which was asked from physiology altogether 9 10 questions and i believe you have done it correctly most of the questions because some of the questions are from the repeat year one question was the neuron diameter effect okay conduction velocity something like that so please also um, send that question dr uh, samarth okay so neuron diameter anybody could recall that question the neuron diameter and conduction velocity or something like that or capacitance related questions will be there i can understand uh, lactiferous tubules okay what was the question no such question okay okay no problem i believe this nine question was there and uh, if you remember any other question please uh, send me in my insta profile or you can email me okay so this is all for physiology thank you so much and best of luck for your result okay god bless take care good evening